Tinkercad can also not just it can also do 3D drawings like a computer aided design software. It doesn't just do circuits. So in this version, you can pull in various objects and put them on a platform. And you can grab the corners and resize. Um, you can use this little widget at the top and grab it with your mouse and move around. You can also click on the work plane. If you hold the control button, you can move the mouse around to do some rotation. For me, I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in. So when I do that, I can move the object around. I can resize it by grabbing the corner, the black ones are the corners. I can make it taller, I believe. So there's different parts you can do. But to change the view, you can click on some of these buttons over here on the left. Um, if you click, double click on the front view, or the right view, or the bottom view. So that gives you some things you can do. So that's moving this around. Zoom back out. You can also, if you do control shift, you can move the platform by dragging it around. So control and shift together lets you move it. Otherwise, you just zoom in on the center of the platform. So let's see. If I want to make a house, our goal for today is to make a house. Let's make one wall. We will make it. Let's see. Your goal is to make a house, but I'm going to try and make it nice and consistent. So I'm going to try and shrink it so it's exactly 10 what are those millimeters wide. So it's a very tiny house. This is more for designing for computer, um, for 3D printing. So if I make it exactly 10, this guy, I'm trying to make it even numbers. It's a little bit hard to, to do. So 80 by 10, and then the height of this guy, let's make him 40. Now, one of the things you can do with a computer-aided design graphics program is to take other objects and cut out. So if I put in this area, like a door, it can be like a door frame for a house. And this is a box, but it is instead of a color, it's assigned as a void space. So when I select the box that's going to cut through this rectangle, I select those two and then I join them together with this group. And when you do that, it actually slices out like a door. You can do the same thing for a cylinder, but when I put a, if I want to make a round window, put a cylinder on there, but I notice I need to rotate this guy. So I have rotation. I can rotate him around, but if I want to make him higher, I have to grab this little pointy thing and then I, sh oops, I went the wrong way. I push him through there and I grab the two groups and cut them apart. And I should have so I grab, control A grabs everything and group it all together. And now I've cut out my window. So I can make another wall that's just exactly like this guy. I hit control C and control V, I copy pasted. So I have two walls. That should be exact opposites of each other. And it takes a while to get used to this interface if you haven't used this kind of th There's different ways to do control the view, move yourself around. Um, one thing I want to do is rotate this whole piece, this whole assembly. I'm going to have a door on opposite ends. So I can rotate in different directions. Um, there are different shapes. So if I want to put a roof on my house, I need to pull him up. 
I want to make sure that they're in, they're the same. Oops. So they see they're not at the same level. So I need to make sure I get oh, control Z. Control Z undo can be your friend if you make mistakes like I do. So I have him there. Let's see, is he pretty close? He's still too high. I need to lower him a little bit. So I think he's touching now. Let's go to the top and see if I've, you see now I've got to size this guy so that he's actually a roof. He lines up with my house. It's not too bad. Let's see if that's pretty close. From this direction, it looks about right. Over here, it looks like I'm not, oh, I think this wall needs to be moved. So now it looks like I'm pretty flush. And there are more powerful tools and probably better ways to use this. I'm just throwing, showing you a little bit of how you use this. Um, one of the interesting things you can also do, you can, add shapes so if you want say we're gonna have like a drive-through um, so we're gonna add pylons so that it's like a car wash almost we put those guys on there now if we select all of our objects and we group them together we make them all red now we have a red drive-through two doors and two windows. It's all one big piece. When I grab it, it acts as one object. I'd have to ungroup it and move some of the individual objects around and rebuild it. But there's a lot of things you can do to this. And there's, I mean, tutorials, you, you can practice with CAD drawing programs all day long. Let's add a star. That's a big star. Let's make him smaller. Squish him down some. Uh, rotate him. Oops. Move him up. Oh, what's going on? That wasn't good. Move them up some more. All right. Looks like he's touching pretty well. He's not overlapping anything. I select all my objects again, group them together, builds them all together. So I've made my little house with a star on the side. And if you had a 3D printer, you can actually export this. You can send it to Thingverse. There's different places that probably print stuff for you if you wanted to. I haven't looked into that. You can export it to different types of files for 3D printing. Um, so you have your own printer, possibly somewhere. Lots of different things out there if you wanted to make an object that you designed yourself. And it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty friendly. It doesn't have all the powerful tools of real engineering software. There's a few things I haven't found yet. But... It works okay for relatively simple things, and you can make some cool stuff pretty quickly, and it teaches you a lot of the same concepts for navigation uh, around an environment in this 3D environment, and some of the same things about cutting and adding to a shape to make a, a three-dimensional shape. So it's a, a pretty cool tool, and you could spend a lot of time working with it. All right. So I guess my suggestion or challenge was to make a house, a 3D house of some sort. Maybe it's just a cabin, maybe it's just a, a little house or a room, but whatever you want to make, try and build it and put it together. Uh, save it, make sure you save it periodically because you might make a mistake and you want to go back. So you can always save it. And it's a pretty cool tool and it's a nice skill to learn because a lot of engineering applications in mechanical 
and civil engineering especially use computer-aided drawing. So biomedical engineering as well. A lot of students, I've had students in biomedical engineering get jobs just because they knew how to use some of the advanced CAD programs for drawing different objects. So good luck to you. Play around with Tinkercad to draw you a little house.